We are going to talk about Arizona, which is a state. And of course, before it was even a state, there was a law in Arizona. And now that Arizona is a state, they're using said law to ban nearly all abortions after this one rare, unique court ruling. It seems like the Arizona state is trying desperately to ensure a W, a fat W for the Democratic Party. Let's take a look. CNN Breaking News. And this is big breaking news just into CNN. The Arizona Supreme Court just issued a major ruling on the future of abortion access in that state. And CNN's Natasha Chen is going through the court's opinion right now. Natasha, walk us through this ruling. Yeah, this is a 47 page decision and right now our teams are going through all of that language. But the bottom line here is that Arizona must adhere to a an abortion ban, nearly all abortions banned except in the case of saving the life of the mother. And this law dates back to the Civil War before Arizona was even a state. There has been a lot of confusion back and forth in Arizona on which state law applies here because right before Roe versus Wade was overturned, the state had instituted a 15 week abortion ban. So there had been pauses to abortions in the state and then res resumption of that then pause again, all in hopes that the state Supreme Court could offer some clarity here. And today, this is what the court has said, that the state must adhere to this 123 year old law banning near all abortions. Now, the text of that law says that there is also a punishment for providers of the abortion uh, between two and five years in prison. The important things huh. to note here so far that yeah, we, we should just start killing women for even thinking about having abortions. Fuck it. Cut out the middleman who dude it's great. Great stuff overall. Fuck it. You know, we lo we love life so much. You don't understand. OK, the life of an unborn child is sacred, which is why the woman carrying the fucking fetus takes an L in that situation. OK. It's like, oh, you liptards love abortion so much. How about we give you an abortion? Light term abortion for trying to have an abortion to begin with. Is this one of those laws that view women as a man's property? I mean, pff, maybe. <laughs> this is fucking insane. Oh my God. We have... This is, we, we do not have a normal country. I've been saying we don't have a normal country, but this is like, this is beyond abnormality. I feel like, I feel like these people, like people that have these ideas should go to prison for wrong thing. I think like people that are like, this seems like a good idea should be at the very least, like put into re-education school or something like to, to just. We should study their fucking brains and try to comprehend how you can live in 2024, how you can live in 2024 in the modern era where we have access to internet. We have access to so much fucking information right in front of us. And they still think like, no, we should do this because God told me to. Oh, Non-DC liberal Dems could so easily snatch the trajectory of this country back if they weren't, if it weren't so goddamn Democrat Party purposely standing in his way. I, I agree. I mean, it's wild, bro. It is wild. It's like, first of all, this would be like, you know, reorienting a law that, that says you can enslave a black person by utilizing a law from that time when black people were not seen as people, but property. You know what I mean? which I hate to put that out in the fucking ether because I feel like that's where we're moving in the direction of where Republicans are going to be like, yeah, actually, that's not a good idea. Hey, hey, shit, write that down. <laughs> what did he say? Write that shit down, dude. Fucking sounds good to me, brother. What? This isn't as dumb as courts interpreting obscenity as applying to abortions. The law is explicitly but stupid. There's a ballot initiative that already has the required signatures will almost certainly pass in November. I know it's not going to be Here's the thing. This is not going to pass. This is not going to be implemented because the reality is that the uh, Arizona attorney general has already come out and said that uh, she will not enforce the state's abortion ban. This immediately got enough signatures. Uh, 
and it will be on the ballot uh, uh, in the upcoming election. So this is going to be a major fucking benefit to the Democratic Party as far as like drawing out new elections. I mean, uh, drawing out new uh, voters to go out in the fucking ballots. People are going to be motivated. For me, however, for me, however, I'm not thinking about that. Right. That's the good stuff. And obviously that's fine and that's great. And I'm glad that it's happening. But for me, there's something beyond this. There's a deep illness. Okay. There is a deep illness in the minds of some Americans. Okay. The notion, the very notion that this is like even permissible for you, the notion that you can be a person in a position of power and say like, Actually, this is great. Let's do it. That is terrifying to me. Because it's terrifying for a multitude of different reasons. But one of them is, like, these people don't have self-preservation in mind, right? Obviously, I've moved beyond the notion that they care about women as human beings and, like, don't want to harm them. Because they very clearly do. This is their policy, right? The entire purpose of bands like this are to simply harm women, to stop them from getting access to medical care that is uh, easily afforded and, and, you know, given to people. It would be akin to saying, I don't like, I don't fuck with fat people, no more insulin, dog. I don't think the Constitution uh, should, should uh, allow people to get insulin if they have diabetes. Like, it's just like, why, what do you mean? That's a, a psychotic thing. This decision should not be left up to you nor Jesus, this decision should be left up to the medical professional. So you can moralize around it as they did with abortion and then have the underlying arguments kind of make sense, I guess. But ultimately, that is what's going on, right? In practice, the abortion ban is simply to be like, if you fucked, you got to fucking be punished with a pregnancy. Sorry, sucks to suck, okay? You shouldn't have fucked out of wedlock. And when you do fuck in wedlock, you should carry that pregnancy to term. It doesn't fucking matter. That's basically the underlying motivation behind it, right? And same with if you're raped, same with if you're a victim of, of pedophilic incestuous rape. Um, doesn't matter. A life is a life. Sucks to suck, right? God is punishing you. That is usually the underlying motivation here. So... I just don't, so we've already decided, we already know why people want this to, to go through, right? Like we get that, but how do you not have any interest in self-preservation in, in your overarching project? How do you not recognize that this is like making you look insane? Are you that lost in your own sauce? Is that what happened? This is something I've been thinking about quite a bit. And I think some of these people genuinely are. 4824, the day before the Arizona Supreme Court decides if a near total abortion ban is passed in 1864, goes back into effect. Anti-abortion extremists pray in tongues on Senate floor, led by January 6th and fake elector, Senator Anthony Kern. No, I, I really do think these people need re-education camps. I, I'll stand on that. I do. I legitimately do. Anyone who thinks like, Hassan, you're a fucking commie. You want to fucking punish people for wrong think? Shut the fuck up. These people literally need help. They need state-sponsored education camps, okay? They need to be forcibly clawed back from the collective psychosis that they are engaged in. I'm sorry, if I'm fucking president, I am literally doing that, okay? Re-education camp. No way out of it, okay? All those fucking libtars that were like, oh, I can't believe you're saying this, is on. Oh, my God. Like, what do we do with this? What do you do with this? What do you do with this? How do you deal with this? You can't. You cannot deal with this. That's fucking nuts, bro.
Yes, not all mentally ill people are conservative, but all conservatives are mentally ill. Racist? The reason they don't punish women is because to them, one, women don't have agency. Why would you punish them when they can't make their own decisions? And two, because it's much more unpopular as an idea. Yeah, don't even fucking... My favorite quote for him is we need to turn Texas into Xinjiang. Uh, yes, I do think that, okay? Xinjiang, for all red states, okay? Mass surveillance, round the clock, one party apparatus member has to live with the family for an extended period of time if you are founded to have extremist beliefs such as this, okay? Yes. Yes, re-education camps. Yes. Oh my God, dude. What is going on, dude? These are people in power, okay? These are not like fucking random Toms, Dicks, and Harrys, okay? These are people in power. Put lithium in the water supply. Re-education camps, put lithium in the water supply, 24-7 surveillance, one party member has to live with you for an extended period of time. There's an onboarding, okay? Fuck me. Ay, 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 dude. I just, I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know how to do, what to do with this. This shit makes me so mad. This shit makes me so fucking mad. I'm going to say if it were up to me. We need to cut their tax exemptions ASAP. It's religious and religious is called bullshit all around. Islam, Christian, Muslims call scum. Dude, dude, these people are not like every fucking religious person. Okay, stop. Okay, but it's not up to you. What is your point? <laughs> That's my point. It's so funny. Oh, okay, but it's not up to you. Okay, I should just stop fucking doing political commentary because, you know, capital owners have completely captured this goddamn country. It's a bourgeois democracy, so obviously the outcomes are always going to be corporate aligned. So there's no real point in fucking covering this stuff and trying to educate people on the matter and to try to explain to you why you feel the anxieties that you actually do every single goddamn day because of systemic failures that are actually not really failures when you think about it, but a, a byproduct of the way that the system is designed. Fuck it, you know? Yeah. Just give up, dude. What do you mean? What do you mean? It's the reason why, why, why do anything? What is this? No re-education camps this America. We end up like China with the Uyghurs or the Japanese internment. It's so funny. We did do that. Um, but yes, no, that's what I'm saying. We do Chinese style Xinjiang policies to the American counter, uh, to the American counter revolutionaries, the American fascists, the American reactionaries need to be re-educated. Okay. If they want to be reintegrated into society, by the way, I love the guy being like, this is not us. Also, this was us. Austin, thank you. Holy moly, dude. Anyway, oh my God, these people are so fucking insane. Anyway, here's the attorney general 
uh, saving the day a little bit. This decision made by the Arizona Supreme Court today is unconscionable and an affront to freedom. Make no mistake, by effectively striking down a law past the century and replacing it with one from 160 years ago, the court has risked the health and lives of Arizonans. The Arizona Court of Appeals decision, which the Supreme Court has struck down today, was well-reasoned and aligned with how courts harmonize different legislation. Today's decision to reimpose a law from a time when Arizona wasn't a state, the Civil War was raging, and women couldn't even vote will go down in history as a stain on our state. This is far from the end of the debate on reproductive freedom. And I look forward to the people of Arizona having their say in the matter. And let me be completely clear. As long as I'm attorney general, no woman or doctor will be uh, prosecuted under this draconian law in this state. The opposite of this happened in Kentucky. For those of you who are wondering, Daniel Cameron was the attorney general in Kentucky and Kentucky voted for a ballot initiative to actually defend abortion. And that fucking piece of shit, Daniel Cameron, who is uh, obviously Mitch McConnell's project, decided I don't give a fuck about uh, the ballot initiative. I'm still prosecuting people. Fuck the citizens. Fuck democracy. Just something to remember. This is why I always tell you elections do matter and that you should vote, especially for shit like this, especially down ballot. The least significant part of the election is the motherfucking president. A lot of people think that it's just the president. It starts and ends with the president. No. Okay. This stuff is infinitely more important for your lives. Infinitely more important. This person won by like a couple hundred votes. That's why I've been telling you since day one, always vote local, always vote, always vote for ballot initiatives, always vote for these people, okay? It's so goddamn important to vote. Huh. Never think about it, but this is how, this, this is how you, you at least marginally improve your living conditions. You can call me a lib all you want. I don't care. Like... Even in Oklahoma, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. What did this person say? Insulin is required for a diabetic to survive. A pregnant woman doesn't need an abortion to survive. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yes, they do. In many instances, they do. Hello? Bro, just say you don't understand pussy and move on, okay? Why is it that we have given so much credence to no sex having asses who have the last time they saw a pussy was when they crawled out of their mothers, okay? Why are we having this conversation right now? Why? Why do you feel the need to chirp when you don't know what the fuck you are talking about? In very rare instances, it's not rare. It's not rare at all. You're wrong, man. You're fucking wrong. And it's not just health complications that, are, that arise through ectopic pregnancies. But guess what? You're a fucking idiot. You're not a doctor. And that's why you don't know any better. That's why medical professionals do not have this kind of se uh, setback. They don't have these uh, weird takes on the issue. You're just a random fucking dumbass. But because you're an American random dumbass, someone along the line told you that your stupid fucking opinion matters. Because, unfortunately for all of us, for the rest of this fucking country, for 75% of Americans, the fucking 25% that decided this is a big fucking deal and shouldn't go on is listened to, and there was a 50-year project by the Federalist Society to basically fucking reorient our entire court structure so we would make this thing that is profoundly popular and just not legal in many states. Oh, it's crazy. So much of politics is about yelling at fucking dumbasses who are just like, you don't get it. This is actually my opinion, and I am a special boy. And because I came up with this special opinion all on my own, you have to take it seriously. Fuck.
My mommy said I'm a special boy and my voice must be heard on this issue. What? Please stop yelling at me. I agree the yelling hurts my ears and is a stressful. Manage your emotions a bit, geesh. Bro, there is there is genuinely a, a, a new kind of brain disease that occurs in the minds of so many fucking like 30 month subscribers where they think like, you know, I've been in here for 30 months. Like if you get passionate and emotional about someone saying some dumb shit, okay, uh, I'm going to chirp at you. It's like I'm the only person in this chat. There is an entire stadium full of people in here, man. Why the fuck do you think? Why are you doing a different version of the thing that I was yelling at the other guy for? Which is me, 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 me. It's literally just always the same. It's like me, me, hello, me. Can we talk about me now? Can, when are we going to get to me? It's the most important part of this conversation. Me. Hello? Hassan, it's sarcasm, please. You're getting secondhand autism. I don't think that person was being sarcastic. What? Agree, but what was the court supposed to do when row reasons are now moot? I do not see how the court could have construed the, uh, what? The pith and substance of the case law relied upon any differently, sad, but objectively true. I blame SCOTUS and Trump. You are ridiculous if you think that there was any sort of serious legal reasoning for overturning Roe v. Wade. That is insane. You are out of your mind if you think this, this is the case. There is a reason why three or two of the three Supreme Court appointees openly stated in a congressional hearing that they would not overturn Roe v. Wade, that the super precedent would stand, even if you are a debate law pervert, okay? And obviously, as I say all the time, Supreme Courts, Supreme Court justices are the highest level of debate pervertry. There is no one higher than them as far as like, as <clears throat> as far as uh, the the highest uh, layer of debate debate pervertry, it is ridiculous. There is no real legal reasoning for why they did that. As a matter of fact, they said the exact opposite and lied about saying that they were not going to overturn it because it was a super precedent. Oh. Pregnancy in this fucking country, depending on especially if you're looking at like uh, lower income areas or if you're, for example, black women, Pregnancy is like a 50-50 coin flip half the time. It's ridiculous. Obviously, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but like pregnancy is fatal. Fatal. Okay? It doesn't have to be uh, just an ectopic pregnancy. There's numerous complications associated with it. It's crazy, man. Yes, yeah, Supreme Court justices are debate pedophiles. They are the highest level of debate pervert, pervertry. No higher level of debate pervertry. Obviously, all lawyers are debate perverts to a certain degree, but there is no higher level of debate pervertry than the Supreme Court. Debate pedophiles. Debate bestiality, lolly animal porn pedophiles. Not 100% on the statistic, but black women are something like four times as likely to die from pregnancy complications than their white counterparts. Yes, that statistic is, I think, correct. We have one of the worst, like, um, maternal mortality rates in the developed world, too. In the United States of America. Okay, in 2021, the maternal mortality rate for non-Hispanic black, subsequently black women, was 69.9 deaths per 100,000 live births. 2.6 times the rate for non-Hispanic white, subsequently white women, at 26.6. It's not four. It's 2.6 times higher. Damn. 
here. Let's look at the maternal mortality in developed countries. Woo! Sheesh! Look at that. Maternal deaths per 100,000 live births in select countries for 2018. The United States, 17.4. France coming in second place at 8.7. Canada at 8.6. UK at 6.5. Australia at 4.8. Switzerland at 4.6. Sweden at 4.3. Germany at 3.2. Netherlands at 3.0. And Norway at 1.8. Number one, baby. Number fucking one, baby. Let's go. Land of the free, home of the brave, motherfucker. That's right. That's right, baby. Let's go. This is probably not accurate. We fucked up the data collection. U.S. says U.S. maternal death rate crisis is it really is really a case of bad data? What do you mean? A new study calls into question the extent of the maternal mortality crisis, which has long posed a disproportionately high rate of maternal deaths compared with peer nations. Data classification errors have inflated U.S. maternal death rates for two decades, according to the study published Wednesday in the American Journal of OBGYN. Instead of the maternal death rate doubling, more than doubling since 2002, it has remained flat, research has found. Uh, there has been a lot of alarm and apprehension surrounding the fact that some of these reports show a threefold increase in maternal mortality, and that is not what we found. We found low and stable rates, said K.S. Joseph, the study's lead author and professor in the departments of OBGYN. A change in the way pregnancy is noted on death certificates 21 years ago improved to improve the detection of maternal deaths led to substantial misclassification and an overestimation of maternal mortality. But the box was checked for many deaths that were unrelated to pregnancy or childbirth. Researchers found, for example, hundreds of deaths of people 70 or older were mistakenly classified as having been pregnant. Deaths from cancer and other causes were also counted as maternal deaths if the box was checked. As a result, the maternal mortality rates showed dramatic increase since 2003. <laughs> Research noted that gaping racial disparities remain, especially between white and black pregnant people. Black pregnant people die at nearly three times the rate of their white peers because they face higher rates of pregnancy complications such as ectopic pregnancy and eclampsia, as well as chronic diseases such as high blood pressure, heart disease, and kidney failure, researchers found. By the way, I wonder, I wonder what happens when they, when they reorient it, though, because I, I feel like it's still, <laughs> it's still not going to be good. <sighs> you can still look at the data broken down by state. Unsurprisingly, blue states have lower maternal mortality by a long shot. California, an abortion sanctuary, has the lowest mortality in the country. Shocked. Chatter is wrong. I just did my capstone proje project on this. Okay. We're not bad at delivering babies. We're just bad at numbers. Guys, this does not change the reality that when you paywall access to healthcare, you end up with the absolute worst, worst healthcare outcomes across the board. If you look at it country by country, the United States of America is absolutely one of the worst nations in the developed world for healthcare. Okay. Everyone always sits around like the Republicans that want to defend privatizing medicine consistently bring up how phenomenal we are at medical research for like a specific type of brain cancer. Right. And that is true. We have a lot of money. We have a lot of people. We have a lot of brain drain. So obviously we do excel in certain cases, but that's not how healthcare works, okay? You can have a fucking football team with the best kicker, but ultimately, if you don't have a solid O-line, you're still going to fucking lose games, okay? You can't just be like, we're the best at kicking, okay? We're the best kicker in the league. It doesn't work that way. That's precisely the entirety of the right-wing argument when it comes to healthcare. I had to throw in a fucking sports reference there for... For all the real ones out there, you know what I mean? Now, having said that, having said that, there are numerous complications surrounding pregnancy, okay? Pregnancy is a very difficult task to take on. 
And if someone is not ready for it, then they should be able to get a safe procedure. And 90% of abortions obviously happen in the first trimester. We already know that. And the rest in the second or even in the third trimester, those abortions are always, always due to medical complications. Okay? There is no world... There is no world in which there's not a single fucking state in this nation where you can just get a abortion, especially in the last term, in the third trimester, for no reason, okay? You have to provide a medical reason, a psychological reason, but like it needs, it requires the carrier to give a medical profession a valid a uh, medical professional, a valid reason, healthcare related valid reason. Nobody is carrying a, a, a fetus for nine fucking months. No, stop saying actually there is. This is not true. This is a Republican right wing framed bullshit counter argument for an issue that does not exist in the real world. Assange should just stop bringing up counter arguments because all it does is give credence to the ghosts that conservatives are fighting and winning against. No, you are also wrong. You are also wrong about this, for the record. I'm giving counter arguments and disparaging the counter arguments or addressing the counter arguments for how ridiculous they are, specifically so that you are equipped with those tools. Many people don't know what the counter arguments are, so they are quick to believe the lies. Where they'll go, oh, wait, what the fuck? People are having recreational abortions at fucking nine months? Come on now. Man, he is so ignorant. How can you say medical complications are a valid reason for an abortion? No one is arguing against providing abortions if it would threaten her life. 100% of type 1 diabetics die with no insulin. Less than 0.1% of women die from pregnancy. Brother, do you think healthcare complications begin and end at killing the fucking carrier? You're like, hey, man, take the L, carry this thing. You know, you have to. You have to carry this thing. How is it possible to be so wrong when your brain is just warped from listening to Ben Shapiro? Okay, when your brain is warped from listening to Ben Shapiro and the Steven Crowders of the world who are basically constantly pumping right-wing propaganda into your fucking brain, you will, of course, turn around you will, of course, turn around and, and fucking repeat that propaganda in here. We haven't even arrived at the application of this uh, kind of restriction and how damaging it is either. We've, I've only covered why it is invalid to make an argument. Okay? I'm telling you why the arguments that Republicans bring forward on this issue are fraudulent. We haven't even talked about the application because once the application sets in, the difference between a miscarriage, okay, and a back alley abortion requires investigation. What level of what level of regulation are you willing to fucking put in? If you see a woman drinking wine and you think they might be pregnant, are you going to arrest them? If you see a woman maybe shoveling snow outside of their house, that could lead to a miscarriage. Physical activity could lead to a miscarriage. Are we going to start arresting anyone and everyone that maybe seemingly is pregnant? How do you actually regulate once abortions are illegal? This, of course, also brings up another problem. Studies have been conducted on this matter as well. Criminalizing abortions does not make abortions rare because ultimately... Whether an abortion, whether a pregnancy is, is carried the term or terminated is still up to the carrier. So you know what that does? Criminalizing abortions don't actually make abortions rare. It just makes abortions, uh, it just continues to, women still continue to have miscarriages. They just have back alley abortions. That's it. And back alley abortions lead to 1 million plus Permanent medical complications, which, 
you know, if you want women to have more children by force, you're going to not like this part, which lead to permanent damage that renders them sterile, incapable of giving birth in the future, as a matter of fact. More than a million women worldwide every single year develop complications due to back alley abortions. What is the statistic exactly? One million per year? More than a million. <sighs> the prosecution of miscarriages is insane. No, that's not national, it's global. I'm actually pro-abortion, but I can still understand that there needs to be stricter rules for it. I also believe that if women can choose to abort, men should be able to choose not to have child support. Yeah, dude, let me tell you something, okay? You are just a fucking men's right activist, okay? This is completely irrelevant to the conversation. Men should be able to choose not to have to pay to, for, for child support. Has nothing to do with this conversation at all. And also, you are not pro-abortion. You are literally advocating with false data... And with a complete misunderstanding of what it means to be pregnant, okay, and a litany of medical complications that arise from that process to further restrict abortion access in this country. Okay? You and other dumb fucks like you are the reason why the Republican Party was able to put forward this project and passed it through undemocratic means... <laughs> And now you have women in red states that have to travel outside of the state to get a fucking medical procedure that they previously already had a hard time getting. Um, I think it's the Guttmacher Institute that uh, tracks the, uh, that has all of the relevant information for the record. For those of you wondering, can you link the back alley abortion statistics, please? Thanks. <sighs> abortion takes affects 50% of people but takes up 100% of the stream can dudes at least get a divorce court segment sure but come on Please be realistic. There needs to be better regulations of abortions. Like, come on, man, just compromise a little bit. Please just see both sides. Yeah, no, there is no both sides in this argument. It is fucking idiotic. It's completely idiotic. To try and make a both sides argument. Like, what do you mean better regulation? This is a fucking routine healthcare procedure, routine medical procedure. It's already incredibly well regulated we've gleaned from this document is that no one who provided an abortion prior to this ruling today will be subject to the penalty and that there is a stay on this decision for 14 calendar days, so two weeks out. Um, the Arizona Attorney General tweeted today that this is unconscionable and an affront to freedom and said, make no mistake that the court has the health and lives of Arizonans. You can see that tweet right there on the screen. There's a lot more to that statement. Um, again, this is a, a long, twisted path to get to this moment. And at the same time, there is a group trying to gather signatures to enshrine abortion rights in the state's constitution. They are gathering those signatures in, in a hope that they can put this to voters. Boris, Brianna. Yeah, I mean, that, and that is their hope. Talk about the future of this issue because this obviously may not bro said no one's banning life-saving abortions during a segment covering a story about banning life-saving abortions yeah also all abortions are life-saving abortions okay come on it is a healthcare procedure ridiculous ridiculous to make it seem like it is not a life-saving measure okay it's i'm sorry the notion, the very notion that we're having this conversation about like abortions being uh, somehow recreational is already right wing framing on the matter. That's it. Like people are not getting recreational abortions, man. Shut the fuck up.
People are like, oh, I love getting cummed inside of. I can't wait to go and get an abortion. Be the last word. And it seems that the state, as well as some other states that we've seen, have gone through this back and forth twisted path since uh, Roe versus Wade was overturned since 2022. Since that moment, there have been um, nearly, I think, a couple dozen states who have severely restricted or banned uh, nearly all abortions. And so uh, this is something that not just Arizonans are dealing with. Uh, there are also multiple states doing what they're doing here, at least from a citizen standpoint, of trying to gather signatures to make it part of the state's constitution. Uh, so as of right now, as we are still reading through this 47 page document, again, we understand that within two weeks or two weeks out from today, that the state must adhere to this law from really Civil War era before Arizona became a state in 1912. Um, and again, this is a ban on nearly all abortions, except mm. in the instance of saving the life of the mother, carrying a possible penalty here of two to five years of prison time for those providing the abortions. All right, Natasha Chen with the latest there. Thank you so much for that. Uh, let's discuss this further now with defense and trial attorney Misty Maris. Uh, Misty, obviously this is something that uh, activists are going to try to take to the ballot. So we will see where that will go. But in the interim, what you are going to see, uh, it appears after two weeks here, is no more abortions with only an exception for the life of a mother in Arizona. Talk to us a little bit about what that is going to look like, considering there has been a lot of confusion around that it seems clear on paper the life of the mother it's not so clear we know that in other states it has actually cost some women who had wanted pregnancies uh the possibility of being able to have future uh pregnancies Absolutely. So first of all, I'm sitting here trying to figure out how a court found that an 1864 law supersedes a 2022 law regarding abortion. But I've read, I, you know, reading through the decision and I've read the court's rationale. But to flip to what you're speaking about, you know, 14 days for complete upheaval of the medical industry uh, of, of any woman who is having any kind of treatment or was seeking treatment that's not too much time and to your point about uh, what it does it mean to save the life of a mother you nailed it it has not been clear what that means from the legal perspective as there's been confusion between which law applies in the state of arizona which was the precipice for this case the question is what is a life-saving measure. How far does that have to be? Uh, is it truly that someone is at death's door or is it a condition that, that could impact the mother's life that qualifies under the statute? So all of that has to be hashed out. As far as what happens immediately, the governor had actually gotten ahead of this and there is an executive order that says that the attorney general is responsible for enforcing uh, this statute for enforcing this decision and the attorney general has said and i imagine we're going to hear from that today uh, that they're not going to move forward with enforcement now that leads to a lot of other legal issues and challenges from local prosecutors so this is a thorny road ahead with a lot more legal well a lot more legal issues that are going to come yeah you can bet that there's already a lawsuit being crafted against the attorney general for the claim that they, they won't enforce this. Misty, I want to dissect the, the rationale here as, as you were describing it for this uh, decision. Uh, the Supreme Court of the state of Arizona apparently is saying that they are constitutionally obligated to uh, go by the legislature's judgment, which is accountable to, in their words, the will of citizens. They're effectively arguing, and I quote, that to date, our legislature has never affirmatively created a right to or independently authorized elective abortion. Essentially, what they're saying is that the legislature has never enshrined abortion as a right in the state constitution, and therefore they have to revert to what's on the books. And what's on the books is this 120 plus year old law. It, it How do I counter the argument of it's a life, the moment the sperm enters the egg? Bro, that is not a real fucking argument. That's not a valid argument at all.
And and if if you want to encounter if you encounter a dumb argument like that in the wild, the question for you is an e the the answer for you is an equally dumb counter argument, which is a hospital's maternal ward is on fire. There's one a live baby, okay, crying. One a live baby that is sitting in a crib. Next to the alive baby is one thousand fertilized eggs. Okay, which do you which one do you save? You only have time to save one. You can either save one thousand fertilized eggs that are you know fertilized in vitro fertilization, or you save the baby. Which one do you choose? You choose the baby, of course. Most conservatives would choose the fucking baby and not the goddamn fertilized eggs. It's ridiculous. We do not think that Petri dishes are the same as a fucking actual life. We don't. We don't think that. Anyone who tries to act like they do think that is wrong. They're lying. Okay? <laughs> because it's not. Is that basically what they're saying? Yeah, let's take it step by step. So here's what happened. In 2022, there was a law passed in Arizona relating to a 15-week gestational period, so a 15-week ban. Obviously, uh, that is more expansive. What if they choose the eggs, though? Yeah, they're lying. That's it. Anyone who says they would choose the eggs are fucking lying. You know, there's not really anything you can do to that person at that point. You're talking to a person who is not being honest. Yeah, what if they lie and say they choose the fucking fertilized eggs? Okay, then they think that, like, millions of people are being murdered every fucking day due to in vitro fertilization, which is a process that requires a shit ton of eggs to be fertilized with sperm, and many of them don't make it through the process. So I guess doctors, through in vitro fertilization, are actually fucking murdering even millions. Millions of additional life are being ended through in vitro fertilization. This is a position that the Alabama Supreme Court had, as a matter of fact, which is why they wanted to ban in vitro fertilization. It's a position that is so unpopular that Donald Trump immediately came out against it. You are now to the right of most of the Republican Party. Okay. What? Okay, you're actually getting it now? Speak for me? What are you saying? Oh, I mean, that is what these nutters believe. Religious nuts holds those convictions. Honestly, they're not lying. They're just actively fucking delusional. The number of people that do legitimately believe that is, is, is so much smaller than the people that even want to ban abortion. Okay. Sorry. It's ridiculous. What? I'm pro-abortion. However, life begins as soon as the egg is fertilized in the womb. The argument of 1,000 eggs versus a live baby is not a good argument. In reality, we don't have to choose between them. Brother, it's an idiotic argument for a, for a million different reasons. The fact that this the underlying premise is stupid. Okay? That's why I said, if they're making a stupid suggestion, you can make a stupid argument. This guy's like, dude, I'm pro-abortion, except like, you know, I need this abortion to only happen under what I believe is permissible. It's great. Medieval Catholics did not believe life started until the baby kicks. Yes, but as we've seen with the fucking eclipse shit, we've moved beyond the stupidity of an era where we did not have access to so much more... Uh, scientific knowledge okay we we've, we've reverted we have devolved chatter needs a vasectomy minimum <laughs> brother that chatter has a, a automatic vasectomy okay why say 1000 eggs instead of one 
Because the difference is that severe. What do you mean? Why say 1,000 eggs instead of one? 1,000 fertilized eggs that are going to uh, be 1,000 successful uh, children, okay, inevitably, when, led, uh, when, when those pregnancies led the term, still outweigh the one fucking fully alive child because the fully alive child is a life. Of right than this 1864 uh, law, which says abortions are essentially illegal with the exception of when uh, the mother's life is at stake. Because that 2022 law was predicated on Roe v. Wade, the right to an abortion was predicated on Roe v. Wade, and therefore the 2022 law stood. Without Roe v. Wade, there is no independent right either in the state of Arizona or in uh, or federal uh, or the federal law that would serve as the basis for what Arizona did in 2022. Therefore, it's gone. And so the 1864 law, which was always on the books, but was essentially just inactive and stayed because Roe v. Wade provided that right constitutionally, is now in effect. And that there's nothing on the books in Arizona or the federal law that says it couldn't be in effect. There's nothing to negate it. And so since it existed, it's simply back into effect at this point. So that is the logic of the court. And that's why they say it supersedes what they did in 2022 as a state, which to me sounded like 2022. Well, that would be the will of the people. But because that was contingent on Roe v. Wade. Yeah, I mean, these guys don't have any arguments whatsoever. That's why the whole states' rights argument also doesn't fucking matter. Because, like, then the states go, okay, we don't want this then. And then they go, never mind, we're going to find a different way to still enforce our will upon the population. That's it. Wade, they said, nope, back to 1864. Very interesting and clear. Thank you, Misty, for that. If you could stand by for us, because actually Governor Katie Hobbs uh, in Arizona, they're just reacting to this ruling. Let's listen to what she said. We don't need to call a special session. The legislature's in session right now, and they can do this right now. They can do it today, um, and they should. They should listen to their constituents, nine out of ten Arizonans who support access to abortion, uh, and do the right thing so that we are not living under the confusion uh, and chaos and uh, at lack of access to health care that's needed. As you heard from those two stories, uh, they can do it right now. Uh, right there. All right, there you hear it. Governor Hobbs saying they don't need to call a special session. The legislature is already in session and could clear this up. Uh, but obviously, that is very much uh, in question. Misty Maris, thank you so much for being with us. Obviously, a lot of breaking news here today is the Arizona Supreme Court has said that the state has to go all the way back to this law, 123 years old, but actually even older in, yeah. in its original formation, all the way back to the Civil War uh, that makes... Uh, a, the abortion completely illegal only with an exception for the life of the mother no doubt this is going to have electoral consequences because there's this group trying to put uh, abortion rights on the ballot in arizona a state we have to mention that could be critical for either former president trump or current president joe biden to get to the white house just became much more motivating right. certainly for biden voters that yeah. is very clear